Hello YouTube, I'm ABC, and today I'm coming out with another game making tutorial. Today's tutorial was requested by Torbashify. It was also requested by someone else, but I could not for life me figure, find out who that was. So Torbashify and someone else requested that I should make a random genera train generation tut tutorial as in um, Minecraft and Terraria. Alright, so in order to do that, we're going to start off making three sprites. First sprite, I'm going to call it SPR Dirt, and I'm going to make it... 16 by 16 and we're gonna give it a darkish brown color and then we'll duplicate to create SPR grass and I'll just scribble on some green at the top there we go to the ugly, gla ugly grass but I will now oh, SPR stone this one also can be 16 by 16 okay let's give it a gray color and now we're gonna create some more sub images to represent other ores so out of three make four sub images total this one is going to be coal, so just put some little black specks on there. Next one is going to be iron, so I'm going to grab it like a little orangey color, and I'm going to make the mount cursor a little bigger for this one because coal is a lot harder to see for whatever reason. All right, and last but not least, diamond. And make a little like diamond. There we go. That's diamond ore. Okay, so now we're going to create objects for each of our sprites. First we'll make OBJ grass, and now we're going to create, or OB, OBJ grass, man, OBJ dirt, sprite dirt, and now we're going to create OBJ stone, and we're going to go into the creation event to, to code um, how it's randomly going to do the or thing. So first off, image index equals zero, image speed equals one. Hello audience, and me from the future. I don't know why I said image speed equals one, but that needs to be zero because if we put it at one, it'll just cycle through the images slowly rather than not at all. We don't want to cycle at all. Okay, so now by default, it's gonna go with stone, not any type of ore. And now we're going to decide when it's gonna become ore. So we're gonna create a new variable called r, r stands for random, and r is gonna equal floor random 100. Okay, random 100 will give us any number between one and 100, or it might be 0 and 100, not sure. But the problem with it is, it could give me 1.2. Well, we don't want that. We want it to be whole numbers only, which is this floor thing comes in. It'll round it down to the nearest integer, okay? So if r ends up equaling 1, we want to create diamond. So image index equals... And I'll just put a little comment here, so that's a 1% chance of diamond. Alright, if r is more than 1, and r is... Less than, what should we say, 7. We want it to be iron. So image next equals 2. And that is a 5% chance of diamond. Just make sure you understand this. But right here we put down 1, so that's 1 out of 100 is 1%. And here, more than 1, less than 7. So the possibilities are 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Those are 5 different numbers. 5 over 100 equals 5%. Alright, so last one, I'm going to go with this coal if r is more than 6 and r is less than, what should we say, 15. Then we want image index equal 1. So that is a 8% chance of coal. Alright, so if you want, you can change change around these, these chances depending on how you like it. Or you can make this out of 1,000 and make this, and um, so you can be more precise. So you'll probably want to make this out of 1,000 if you want it to be realistic like Minecraft. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to do it like this. So now we got that down. Oh, and of course you gotta set the sprite, I forgot that. And now, we're going to create control. This is going to handle all of the train generation. This is what you came to this video for. Alright, so, creation event, we're going to create three variables. P, we're set equal to 15. V, set equal to, I don't know, 2. A, we're set equal to negative 1. Okay, position, velocity, acceleration. Position, it's going to represent how high how high up it is at, one, at a particular point. We start off 15 because um, the height and blocks of the screen is going to be 30. So 15 would be halfway. V is the slope or the rate at which P is changing. So at it's going to start off moving upward to the rate at a slope of two, and then A is acceleration, which at the rate at which the slope or velocity is changing, and it's at negative one. So to start off, it's going to it's going to start up halfway, move up by two, and then it's going to move up from one from there because it, this will have decreased by one. So acceleration doesn't make the slope decrease. It makes the slope either makes it decrease at a faster rate or makes it increase at a slower rate. So it's a little bit complex. If you want to be um, be even more technical about it. This is a position function, right? You can call this derivative of the, of the position function, and this is a second derivative of the position function. 
And if you understand that concept, you understand the basis of calculus. So if you understand that concept, you'll, you'll understand um, the majority of this tutorial. So now we're going to make a loop, a for loop to be exact. And I'm just going to type it down and explain it later. So, so for loop is in this initialization, what do you want to do in the start of the loop? The condition, um, it will keep doing the loop if that condition is meant, met, and what to do at the end of the loop. So what it's going to do is, start off at i equals 0, it's going to run, run through this code, add 16 to i, so i equals 16. Then it's going to run through this code again, add 16 to i, so i equals 32. Let's keep repeating that un until this condition is no longer true. So um, once i exceeds room width, it's going to stop. And this way, it'll go through column by column, every bit of our terrain, column by column, until it, until it reaches under the room, which one, which one we don't want to draw anymore. So this way, this will take care of all of the all of the terrain within this loop. Now within this loop, we're going to make another loop. We're going to say for j equals 0. We can't say the same variable as i, otherwise it'll mess it up. So this can be the same thing. j equals, we'll just say 0, j is less than room height, j plus equals 16. Now this works the same way, but the only problem is, is we don't want to start at 0. If it starts at 0, it'll just fill up the whole room. We don't want to fill up the whole room. We want to start at p, at p equals 15, the position that we're at currently. So the way we're going to do that is type down room height minus p times 16. Okay, this looks a little bit complicated, but it's not too bad. So room height, it, which if, if we had to start room height, it will end immediately. There would be no n nothing whatsoever to, to make because it needs to be less than room height in order for it to continue. And if we put down p equals 1, it'll go one block higher than room height, so it'll be one block at the bottom. And that way, as we change p, this will represent how many blocks high we start off. And then it will add 16 each time. Remember, the y-axis is inverted, so when you add to it, it goes down. So then it'll just keep going down until we reach the bottom. All right, and then for every loop, we want to create a, a stone. So I is the X, which column we're at right now. J is is this part right here, and it will represent the Y. Okay, now every, every time we, we go through each, the column and, and make all of them, we want to mess around with these variables to make it show up, randomize the slopes and that kind of stuff. So we're going to add V to P, because remember, V is the rate of change of P, so it makes sense that after every column, we change P by value of V. And A, in the same way, is, is the rate of change of V, so we're going to say V plus equals A. And A, which at the core of everything, is going to be random, which is what we want. We want it to be random. I'm going to say choose uh, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. These numbers don't mean anything other than the fact that I've tested them, and they work well for our purposes. Okay? So now, this is basically the main gist of the code, so we're going to create a room, and we're going to make it rather wider, so I'm going to double the, double the width to 1280, so that way we can get a better idea of, of how the train works. And we're just add control to it, and we're going to make the background blue because we want it to look somewhat satisfying. And one more thing, in the control object, we're going to create have a keyboard event, uh, keyboard, spacebar, and when we hit space, we'll just do room restart. So this way, we'll be able to um, restart the room and see that random generation. We can test it out in a better way. Okay, so he here we have it. Uh, this looks pretty bad overall, but we'll just go over what worked first. So as you can see, the ore is randomizing it like we told it to. It's mostly gray, and then if we if we probably did the calculation, roughly 8% of it is going to be coal, and then after that 5% of it's iron, and then 1% of it is diamond. That that's and that's what we want. But here, if you look around, it, it just goes up and never comes back down. So that that's bad. But it's being random like we like we told it to. So now we, what we want to do is we want to set restrictions on onto it. We want to set restrictions on how high it can go and how low it can go. So it doesn't go below the screen either. But if I press spacebar a few times, see it, now it goes below the screen we don't want that so all none of these come out the way we want it to no matter how many times press spacebar so now we'll set restrictions on it go back into our control and then we're going to say if p is more than 26 remember 30 is the maximum height so this way if it comes within four of the of the tallest we want it then we want p to equal 26 so not go above it and we also want v to equal zero so so that way the the v won't be saying won't keep saying go up go up go up well while P keeps saying, I can't go above 26. So V will, will be, will stay at zero. And now we want acceleration. We want it to change to a negative value so that V will start working its way down again. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to say v, A equals ABS absolute value of A. So this way it'll become positive value of whatever it is. And then if we set, set negative, it'll become negative. That way A will start heading down again. Then we copy this and we can say if P is less than four, because four is the minimum value we want equals 4, v equals 0, and we want to take away that negative so that that way it will go, start going back up again. Then if we do that, it stays in the screen much nicer. And as, this is probably everything you came here for, but fact still remains that's a barren wasteland. We're going to add, so we're going to add dirt to it. Okay, 
So in the very first step of this for loop, we want it to be a graph that you create. So I'm just going to create outside the for loop. Now I want the y value or, or the, we, we can't plug in j because j hasn't been created yet. So we'll just plug in this value, which we want j to start at. And I want this to start out one further than it would have. So if we type down p minus 1, that would be the same as adding 16 to this entire. All right. So now we'll create one grass at the top, and then it's going to go all the way all the way down with stone. But we want to, there to be a couple dirt layers of dirt under it as well. So the way we're going to do that is if j is less than, we'll just copy this. So if we do p minus 1, it'll be that'll be one further along. If we put down 5, it'll be 5 further along. So if it's still less than 5 further along, we want it to be dirt. And otherwise, we want it to be stone. And there you have it. This is our randomization script, and it's only 17 lines of code, so it could have been a lot worse. I, I'll guarantee you Notch's is a lot longer than that. His works better too, but of course his is a lot longer than that. And But this one works pretty well. So we'll just test it one final time and see how it goes. Okay, there you go. We have the dirt. On, on there, grass on top, and ore is randomized. There's a certain level of dirt under the grass. Next time if we press spacebar, it looks good every time. So there's the randomization code. I hope it works for you guys. I, I was actually, I actually want to make a little better one with using a lot more math, but I, I couldn't figure anything out. This is, this is a little bit complex. But this one works pretty well for our purposes, I think. So, I can take it off the list, terrain generation. Hope you guys found that helpful. Please rate, comment, subscribe. I always like to have more requests. If you have another request I haven't covered yet, please do ask. And we'll see you guys next time.